In this video, I'm going to show you how to summarize one quantitative variable, okay, and that in this case we have pulse rates and beats per minute, um, numerically, so using a number. So I'm going to uh, use the same example in our previous videos. These are um, a sample of pulse rates from some statistics students. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is to find the uh, measures of center. Um, so in this case, we are going to find the mean of this uh, sample, the median, and the mode. So the mean you're probably quite familiar with. The mean is basically just the average of the um, list of numbers. The notation we use is x bar, okay? And all we have to do to find the average or the mean is we just add up all of these data values together, and then we divide by the number of data values, uh, which in this case we know is 24. So I'm going to add them together. Okay, and I'm not going to write them all out because I'm sure you know what I'm doing here. Um, and then I'm going to divide by 24. And that gives me... Dividing gives me 73.8 three, three, dot, 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 the three repeats. And if I round this to one decimal place, um, since the number to the right of the eight is three, which is less than five, uh, this is going to round to 78 or 73.8 beats per minute. So that is my mean. Something to notice about the mean is that um, the mean uses every single data value in its calculation. Um, and notice that the mean is also sensitive to extreme values. So if this value had been like a million instead of 89, that would have drastically affected my mean and made it a much, much larger number. Uh, but we can see 73 is pretty representative of these values. We know most of these values occur in the 70s, so that makes sense. So in this case, the mean is a good measure of center. The next um, measure of center we're going to talk about is the median. Um, and the median is basically um, like the middle value in the ordered list of numbers. So it's sort of the, um, it is the value that is greater than half the numbers and smaller uh, than half the numbers. So in order to calculate the median, I'm actually going to have to rewrite this list of numbers and I'm gonna to have to rewrite it from smallest to largest, so that's a little bit tedious. So you here you see um, the list of numbers, but they've been ordered um, from the smallest number um, working up to the largest number. And the way that I find the median, which is the middle value, is that um, since there are 24 values, I know that um, the 12th value and the 13th value are the two numbers that divide this list into 50% the lower half, 50% uh, the larger half. So in this case, that's 1, 2, um, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is this, this low 50% of values. And... And then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I have 50% of the largest values over here. Okay, so that tells me that my median is going to fall between 72 and 73. So the median is going, going to be um, 72. And some people use this notation with the tilde. And it's going to be the average of these two numbers, so 72.5. Okay, and that is my median. The last uh, number that we are going to uh, find is the mode. Okay, this is another measure of center. And the, the mode actually 
it's the most frequently occurring value. Okay, so when we look at these measures of center, we are looking for values that represent our data set. So there are different ways to do that. And so you can say it's the average, you can say it's the middle value, you can say it's the most frequently occurring value. They're just different ways. And you know, they're, some of them are better than others in you know, certain situations. So for the mode, we're gonna be looking for the most frequently occurring values. I, um, just going through my list, I can see that 67 occurs three times. I can see that 72 occurs three times. Um, I can see that 74 occurs three times. So these all occur three times. So I would say 67, 72, and 74 are all modes. You can have more than one mode. In that case, we say um, the distribution is multimodal. Okay, so there you have it. We have our mean, 73.8, our median, 72.5, and our modes uh, here. And you can see they're all pretty similar. In this example, I wanna show you how to find the five number summary for the data. Um, so as in the previous example, the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange these values um, in order from smallest to largest. Um, you know, currently they're not in any particular order. So here you see the data values and they are arranged in the order of smallest to largest. Okay. Um, so in order to find the five number summary, what I need to, what I must do is I must find the minimum value. Um, I have to find the first quartile, um, which we use the notation Q1. Okay, and the first quartile divides the data into two sets, um, the smallest 25% and the largest 75%. I have to find Q2, which is just the median, so we've already found that. I have to find Q3. Um, Q3 is the number that divides the set of data into the bottom 75% and the top 25%. And then I have to find the maximum value. And that's going to give me my five number summary. Um, so when the data is ordered like this, it is easy to see that the minimum value is 52. And the maximum value is 98. We already found the median before. Um, we said that it divided the data into two halves. And in this case, it was 72.5. So I'm just going to write Q2 here. OK, so how do I find Q1 and Q3? Well, once I found Q2, I can just look at the bottom half and I can find the median of the bottom half. So I know that there are 12 values here, and so the Q1 is going to lie between the sixth and the seventh value. So I find the um, sixth value, and here is my seventh value. So I know that Q1 will lie between these values, and so it is 67. 0.5. It's just an average of 67 and 68. And then I'm going to look at the top 50% and I'm going to divide this into two quarters. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the median of the top half is going to lie right here between 75 and 82. And so Q3 is going to be equal to 75 plus 82 over 2, which will give me 78.5. So that's Q3. Okay, and then this is my five number summary. And notice how um, Q1, Q2, and Q3 divide. Um, they are called quartiles because they divide my data into four sets. Each set contains 25% of the data values. So here's 25% of the smallest values, 25% 
of uh, values here, 25% of the values here, and the largest 25% of the data values are here. So that's what the quartiles are doing, and we use them to come up with a five number summary. Um, so in order to draw the box plot, I'm just gonna start by making a graph um, using these numbers as my scale. So maybe um, my graph might start um, so let me draw the graph on another piece of paper. So maybe I start the graph at zero, and then we have 10, 20, 30. So these are for pulse rates, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110. So those these just represent pulse rates, right? Um, and what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to draw, I'm going to use my five number summary, um, which is 52, 67.5, 72.5, 78.5, and 98. And I'm just going to plot those on my graph here. Um, so I have let's see, 52 is my smallest value. So I'm just gonna make a little horizontal line there for 52. Uh, another one for 67.5, which is probably about here. Um, another one for 72.5, 78.5 we have over here. And finally 98. Okay, and what I'm going to do is, so this is the min, right? This is the max. And here I have uh, Q1, Q2, which is the medium, and Q3. And I just connect these to make a box. And then I make these whiskers that connect the box to the min and the max. And this is just a very basic um, box plot. It's just a little more visual. Okay, and you can see that it divides the pulses. Um, we have 25% of the pulses here, 25% here, 25% here, and 25% here. And I can see the min and the max, and I can see the median also. So this is what we call a box plot. There are a couple other questions um, I want to show you how to answer. Um, the first question, um, um, if you recall, the five number summary for the pulses uh, was given by these five numbers. And one question we might want to ask is, is the minimum value, which is the 52, an outlier? In other words, does it qualify as an extreme value, like an, a value that is very far from the other values? So we do have a way to measure um, whether or not a value is extreme or is an outlier. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate something called the interquartile range. And all that is, is that's just Q3 minus Q1. So in this case, that's 78.5 minus 67.5. And that is 11. And now what we do is we define an, uh, an outlier as any value that is smaller than uh, Q1 minus 1.5 um, times the interquartile range. I'm just going to write IQR. So in this case, um, Uh, that would be Q1 is 67.5, and then 1.5 times 11 would be 67.5 uh, minus 16.5, which is 51. Okay, so in this case, is 52 smaller than 51? And in this case, it's not. So we would say not an outlier. It's close, but it's not an outlier. And so just going back to the box plot, um, an outlier would be anything that is smaller than 51. So 
So this would sort of be our boundary here. And since, since 52 is just above that uh, limit, um, that uh, 52, 52 is not an outlier. So your next question might be, well, is the maximum value an outlier? So is 98 an outlier? And we're going to use a very similar process. Um, we are going to, so once again, um, well, we know the interquartile range, um, which was Q3 minus Q1. We knew that that was 11. Um, so in this case, um, when we're looking at the largest values, uh, an outlier would be any value um, larger than uh, larger than Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR, I, IQR. So that is equal to 78.5 plus 1.5 times 11 of 78.5 plus 16.5. And that is 95. Okay, so that is the cutoff for outliers when we're talking about the larger values. And so the question is, is 98 larger than 95? And it is. So the maximum value is an outlier. Okay, and if you look at the graph, uh, the box plot here, um, the cutoff would be 95 for outliers. And so this would be for the larger outliers. So sometimes people will modify the box plot um, to take into account outliers. And what they'll do is instead of drawing um, the whisker um, so that it goes to the maximum value, they'll draw the whisker so that it goes to the maximum value that's not an outlier. 